Yeah, when I was only 17, I could hear the angels whispering. So I drove into the woods and wandered aimless to goodbye till I heard my mother shouting through the fog. It turned out to be the howling of a dog. Or what to be exact, the sound sent shivers down my back. But I was drawn into the pack, and before long, they allowed me to join and sing their song. So from the cliffs and higher still, where we would gladly get our fill, howling and Shrilly at the dawn And I lost the taste for judging right from wrong For my flesh had turned to fur Yeah, my thoughts they surely were Good morning Technology's a weird thing. We're not on Facebook, I don't know why It told me we weren't on YouTube And it told me we weren't on Periscope But it seems like we are So, Good morning Welcome to the morning show. Thanks for tuning in. I think we got it. Todd's in the Periscope chat. We got a lot of people in the new YouTube chat. Thanks for migrating over to the new YouTube channel. I appreciate that. We got Steve B. We got Norm, Noah, Real D, William Shelby, Josh. Don't forget the intro. It's it's baseball bits is what I was going to say. There's some of those. There's some geography bits. There's some American history bits. There's some music bits. There's some book bits. Just bite-sized bits of everything that I enjoy. It's not catered towards anyone specific or any niche market. It's just mm, it's literally my brain. I got an email sometimes. I got an email recently about this guy who actually might help out with some shows come October. We're still going strong in October. I got an email, uh, and he was like, as someone who loves American towns and baseball and books, I love the show. <laughs> it's like, hell yeah. Glad I found you. Glad I found you. Very interesting. If you're interested in just sports, you can tune into the John Boy Media channel. Jake's got his uh, morning show, Wake and Jake, coming up right after this one over there. Also on the John Boy Media Network, we got Laughs from the Past today. We're in season nine of Laughs from the Past, and it's all about heists. Heists. And heists are awesome. It's so cool. I mean, the, the heist that we just did on this one was the Mona Lisa. And the Mona Lisa heist is really the only reason the Mona Lisa became as famous as it did. And there's this huge conspiracy with the Mona Lisa heist, which is awesome. If you're a Giants fan, you can tune in to Talking Giants. They got a new episode out today. They're doing their PPPs, player profile and projections. They did Ross and Baker. Talked about camp battles. John Boy and Jake Radio is coming up at 10 o'clock. A new sequence is out with Phil Hughes. If you're a Yankees fan, I know a lot of my audience is. Phil Hughes talks about an appearance out of the pen in 2009. As a little little insight, he said, into the way Posada called games versus the way uh, Jose Molina called games, which I found interesting. And talking Yanks, we did the voicemail episode, which was good, but the Marlins kind of, you know, the whole situation kind of dampered all of baseball talk yesterday. But they're going to keep going strong. They're going to keep playing. Cool. Hey, John Boy, where is this on YouTube? Let me uh, – it's not on – it's not on the uh, main YouTube channel anymore. It's on it's on a new one. Uh, I'll put the link in Periscope. That's to the channel. Subscribe. That'd be that'd be cool. Thanks. Uh, so that's everything coming out today on John Boy Media Network. We have and that was uh, Blitz and Trapper, a song called Fur. I really like that song. I really like that band. I think it's the second time I've opened up the show with Blitz and Trapper song. Uh the music is interesting because I like slow, slow music. But I like slow music, and that was the idea. Like, we'll start the, the morning off. We'll ease into it. I'll play some of the slow songs I like, and we'll, like, go into it. And uh, and then and then now I feel like I want to start the show a little more upbeat with some energy for myself. Morning, I was about to wear that shirt today. No way. Yeah. I wore it on a – I wore – hold on. I wore it on a date with Katie on uh, the other day. I was about to wear it today. Good morning, Taurus. Your hair's having a <laughs> killer week. Yeah, <laughs> There's stuff going on here. You look like Joey Mul- You're go- becoming like like you and that Joey Molinari. What's his buddy's name? Ben? Yeah. If you poof your hair a little more Kramer, you and him could do like a twins where he's Arnold and you're. Yeah. Put that in the works. 
Anyway, that's Jake. He's setting up for his morning show. Um, Josh, what did you say? Go to the channel. We're missing the show. The show is live on another link. Oh, yeah. Here. I know I've messed up YouTube. The YouTube audience was in a different <laughs> different chat. Uh, everything got messed up today. I think it's because we have a the brand new YouTube channel. And on the new YouTube channel, you can't. Like, I don't think it wants me to be doing live streams yet. So we don't have all the opportunities. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know what's going on. But anyway. Yesterday was a fun rabbit hole with that uh, senior league, huh? Go listen to that shit. And on the new YouTube channel, we're, we're going to put out, like, you know, seven-minute clips that can live on their own, like, the senior league was wild, and then it's what everything we found yesterday. So there you go. That was Blitz and Trapper. This is John Boy Media. I did all that shit. Enough of the nonsense. Let's get into uh, the town. The town is Lewiston, Idaho. Lewiston, Idaho. And... Lewis Knight, I was blown away. I was blown away when I read the thing I want to talk about with Lewiston. And I'm not using hyperbole, but obviously I am. Don't be dumb about it. No, it was, I, was, I was in shock. So I'm going to hear some drone footage. Shout out to Shane Hayward on YouTube. Drone footage of Lewiston. Lewiston is located 30 miles away from the Lower Granite Dam. Okay? 30 miles from a dam. In springtime... Oh, so they have their own festival. I think that's becoming what I like, is finding out what festivals each of these towns have. Because we had, like, the Cherry Festival, the Peanut Festival in that Texas town. I told you the town I lived in California had a Honey and Wine Festival because it's kind of like Napa South and Livermore area there. And then this is Lewiston, Idaho, which is big. I believe it was the capital of Idaho for one year. And then they said, hey, let's not do that. Let's do somewhere better. So they moved the capital. But the thing that shocked me was that you can get to Lewis, Lewiston, Idaho, and it was named after Meriwether Lewis. That's what the dude who named the town said. He said, I named this after Meriwether Lewis because Mary, Lewis and Clark came by there on their journey. But really, it was named after his hometown in, like, Lewiston, Maine or something like that. But he kind of kept that a secret is the way I read it, which seems weird. Dude, no one cares why you named a town your town. Uh, Just name your town. Anyway, I'm going to get to the festival at the end unless I forget. You can get to Lewiston, Idaho from the Pacific Ocean, which blew me away. Uh, Blew me away. Just didn't expect it. Kind of got shocked by it. So here's where Lew- here's where Lewiston, Idaho is. And people from this region probably know this. You know, it's uh, it's really sou- uh, northwest Idaho. It's right on the border. The river separates Idaho and Washington. And it's on the corner of two rivers. So it's a port town. That's cool. It is... Uh, Idaho has a seaport. That's like basically what blew me away. Idaho has a seaport. Distinction of being the farthest inland port east and the west coast. So what I did was, and I'll do it with you guys, is I basically played this game where I just mapped the river. I'm just scanning this river. The Snake River. Great name for a river. And we're going to track this until we get to the Pacific Ocean because it kind of blew my mind that you could get all the way into Idaho. So the first big thing is it comes into the Columbia River. I think we're going to have to go north on the Columbia River. I used to play this game on my phone. Oh, I'm going to show you guys this. I didn't even think about this. Remember, like, Temple Run and those games like that? I would play this game on my phone when I was driving places. Let me uh, let me go to a random place. I'll just go down to Lavalette. I'm going to show you this game. I sent it to my buddy who does stuff. He's a guy that does stuff. I used to play this game where you zoom in on your phone. All right? <laughs> this is so dumb. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's 65 and sunny in Lewis, and I forgot that. All right, here's the game. You make sure I don't give away any fucking information. You zoom in pretty close, right? And then you got to scrub real fast. This, oh, see, I just lost because I'm playing backwards on the phone. You got to scrub real fast, and if the, if the line that you're following falls off the screen, you lose. And it's like you have these courses, and it's called a, it's called Thumb Race App. And you just got to scroll, and you can't get the blue 
Oh, I see. It was a sharp right turn. I just fucked it up. And you can't get the blue out of the screen. It's called Thumb Race App. And I made this game up. And I I sent a video of the... See? Okay. Uh, uh. I sent the video. Okay. Okay. Doing good. This is really good. Uh, I sent a video of that to my buddy who develops things and, like, makes apps and businesses. I said, make this, app, make this phone game. It's called Thumb Race. And, you know, as soon as the track is out of the screen, you lose. But you, whoever can get there from A to B, and there's all different courses, you know, the first time it's just like a straight line. Whatever. So we're that's what – it's a great game. It's called Thumb Race. I invented it. I don't know how to make it. And it's just for people with fucking twitchy thumbs. You just find a course. Sometimes the courses get really hard. There's like loops and spins. And, like, that takes a while. Other courses, someone's got the top record, and it's, like, 20 seconds. You're like, whoa, how did he do that? It's crazy. So, Thumb Race. It's a game I play by myself that's not official. And that's what we're doing on the map here. We're following the Columbia River until we hit the Pacific Ocean. We went Snake River, Columbia River. Okay, this looks like a huge dam here. Look, That looks like where the Columbia River has a big old dam. Anyway, let's get to the let's get to the Pacific. Let's get to, this is we're doing Lewis and Clark's adventure basically. We're taking a tour. Uh oh. Did I go the wrong way? I feel like I feel like I went the wrong way. Okay. Maybe I should have went south on the Columbia River. So the Snake River goes this way. And then Okay, should have went south on the Columbia River, not north. That's my bad. We're going to Portland. Saying what's up to Portland and Vancouver. Now which way do we go? Now we go north. And we're up and we're up and boom. We're Columbia, mouth of the Columbia River. Astoria. That's where Lewis and Clark set up camp. I think in Mills Crossing right here. That's where Lewis and when they finally reached there, but they had to wait out a winter. I believe... Lewis and Clark hung out for the winter, like right around in the Astoria area by the Goonies. Goonies, Lewis and Clark, it's just the land of adventure. So anyway, that's crazy. You can take a boat into Idaho. If you tell me you knew that, you're probably from Idaho or from that area. Pacific Ocean to Idaho. There was a video of someone doing it, and I was like, oh, that would be cool to play the video of someone doing this trip. But it's 38 minutes long. And even if I watch it double speed, that's 15 minutes long. So we'll just thumb through it. It was cool seeing going from ocean and then like the mouth of the Columbia and then you got a bunch of dams. I don't know what that is. That's pretty. Ah, oh, a lot of scenery. What a journey. Oh, here's a dam. Let's watch this part. Okay. Oh, he's making asparagus. Cool. Smelly piss on the boat. Probably piss into the, the water, so the asparagus smell just goes there. So this is one of those lifts. The boat's going to get lifted. What are these called? I believe they're called boat dam elevators. BDE. Oh, well, check out this technology. I don't even get it. So anyway, you can take a boat from the Pacific Ocean to Idaho. We've all learned it for the first time. Not a single one of us knew this already, so don't act like you did. And that's Lewiston, Idaho. Oh, what was the other thing I want to do? They have um, a dogwood festival. Celebration is named for the abundant dogwood trees that are in fragrant bloom during the festival. This sentence, during and shortly after the festival, these pink blossoms blow through yards and streets like drifts of snow. Made me sneeze just thinking about it. Dogwood Festival. Lewiston. I'm in on it. Tell me what your town's festival is, but don't let me find it on my own. 31, 31st Dogwood Festival. I want to see the, the trees... Okay, just some skaters in Idaho. Makes a lot of sense. When I lived in Illinois, so many skate parks because they're just flat ground. 
And it, where I lived in Illinois, they built um, snow sledding hills, man-made sledding hills. That kind of surprised us because in New Jersey, on the East Coast, you just go to like a hill on a golf course or you can find a hill. This seems not like uh, a festival. It just seems like a day at the skate park. Look at that guy. Skinny head. Okay, they got old cars. They got bacon-wrapped meat. They got a bunch of people dancing, doing line dances. They got antiques. Seems like you're regular. Uh, what's the dog? We need the dogwood part of the festival. What if I what if I Google dogwood pink blossoms? Will I have an allergy attack? I think this guy. I think this guy is passionate and knows a lot about. It's just like the varieties you see out in, in nature in the landscape. Uh, only it's got a little bit bigger bloom, and they dogwoods come in three colors: white, pink, and red. Why? Wow. What an accent! Just a dark version of pink, but they're all three the same kind of okay, dogwood. Okay, hold on. I want to listen. Native variety. Dogwoods come in three colors, white, white. pink, and red. Uh, the red is actually not a true red, but just a variety. Dogwoods come in three colors, white, 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 Plant guy, runs a nursery, dogwood. Shout out Westwood Gardens. Go follow them on all of your plant needs. What? I think that's all we got. I think that's everything we got on Lewiston. We did it. And that's all I have to say about that. Random baseball player of the day today is Marcelo Lopez. Marcelo Lopez. As of 2010, he had more major league games. He had won more major league games than any other left hand. <laughs> oh, this is the stat his bio opened with. As of 2010, he had won more major league games than all but one left hander. Born in Cuba. So, come on, bio people. I know that baseball is full of dumb stats, but you can't you can't open up a bio that he's won more major league games than all but one left-hander from native Cuba. Only one lefty from Cuba gets to brag about how many wins they have, and that's the dude who has the most because you're already narrowing it down a lot. Anyway, Marcino, uh, Marcelino, no way I'm pronouncing this right. He had a hell of a rookie season. I'm going to go look at that. Just a hell of a rookie season and then kind of uh, flamed out in a way. His full name is Marcelo Pons Lopez. He is buried at Vista Memorial Garden. Still think it's so weird that Baseball Reference offers you that. It's like the fifth thing they offer you. Bats right, throws left. That's dangerous. Why would you do that? You risk getting hit in your pitching arm. So he, he plays second in Rookie of the Year in 1965 behind Kurt Bleffery. Not familiar with him. But his rookie year, he was pretty nasty. He had... Uh, a 293 ERA, so a sub-3 ERA in 32 games started and 215 innings. I mean, that's pretty damn good to have 215 innings and have a sub-3 ERA your rookie year. I believe he also had a winning record on a team that sucked. They only won 75 games, and he had a winning record in his 32 games, so that's pretty good. Let's go to his game log that year. 1965. Ooh, first game against the Yankees. Eight innings pitched, three earned runs. Took the loss. Not great. I wonder who he played. 65, what names were there. And then, his, then he faced the Yankees again and two starts later. 
Do you have any complete game shutouts? This, do, do, do. Yep, he had one. Oh, he had two complete game shutouts his rookie year. August 6th against Washington and July 9th against Cleveland. It was a doubleheader. What was his worst start? Three innings pitch, six earned runs. Up oh, one inning pitch, five earned runs versus the Yankees. You're a biased Yankee fan. Of course you're going to click on that one. Yep, I am. Uh, nickname check. We got Bobby Richardson. Little R- Dick Rich. No, no, no. Bobby Dick. Tom Tresh. Mickey Mantle. He's good. He got a pinch run for. Old Mickey Mantle. Elston Howard. Joe Pepitone. Hector Lopez. Roger Repose. Cleet Boyer, Phil Lins, Whitey Ford was on the bump for the Angels. You had Jose Cardinal, Jim Pearsall, Jim Fragosi. Jose, Jim, Jim, Joe was the top four. Just throwing all the J's out there. Bobby Noop, Lou Clinton, Tom Egan, Paul Schell, Marcino Lopez. All right. So what happened? I'm not going to do it. You guys are right. It was rude. Let's, let's go look at a good start. Let's look at his numbers versus Hall of Famers. Let's look at... Marcelino's numbers versus Hall of Famers. He uh, he ended up, like his career after this rookie season, it wasn't. It wasn't, uh, it never got better. Never really stayed the same either. Ooh, Al Kaline crushed him. Damn. 407 batting average. Can you guys see that? Hold on, let, me, let me fix it. Let me fix it on the screen so you can see. Reggie Jackson, two homers off of him. 462 batting average. Six for 13 with two homers and a double. Damn. Well, these guys are Hall of Famers, so I guess it does add up. Did he crush any anyone? Not really. Almost, uh, Yaz. He got yeah, he handled Yaz pretty well. Seven for twenty seven. Not bad. But yeah, if you go to his full page and we look at his full career, I, I, I believe it didn't. He eventually settled into a reliever role in uh in nineteen sixty nine, seventy. He comes in and he's a reliever. He only starts a couple games there. And he's all right. 1970 with Baltimore, he had a really good year. He won the World Series with them. Did he pitch in the postseason? Marcelina Lopez, 1970 World Series game two. Oh, yeah. Fucking got an out. October 11th, special day. John Boy Media World. Who'd he come in for? He came in and got one out in the World Series. Was it to finish an inning? Or did he do bad? No. What the fuck? Marcelino, where'd you go? Mars. All right, so Marcelino Lopez replaces Mo Drabowski pitching and batting ninth. He faced Bobby Tolan. And he popped him up to third base, and then he got replaced for Dick Hall. In your face, Bobby. Bobby Tolan had a home run in the game, Bobby did. Lefty batter. So he came in to get the lefty matchup. So I think our guy Marcel's got a World Series ring. We're all happy for him. That's fantastic. 1970 World Series. Cool. Thanks, baseball reference. Your ads are annoying, which is weird, because I believe I pay for you. Maybe I'm not logged in. Is that the problem? I'm logged in now, and the ads are gone. I'm just the dumbest. I'm I'm just so dumb. Unbelievably dumb. And that's all I have to say about that. That ends the sports and town section of the day. And we're moving on to books. Books. I think I, I need to start putting the author of the book in the title because I do feel like new people come and they're like, what's this show? And it's like, books. 
Someone in uh, the YouTube chat said, how long have you been logged out, Jimmy? I, I think forever, but I don't know, because whenever I go to do the versus Hall of Famer, you need stat head for that, right? And I'm logged in. I'm logged in there. So it just must log you out on the – yeah, I'm looking at it. Like whenever I go versus Hall of Famer or look at their splits and you have to use stat head baseball, you have to be logged in for that. But it doesn't automatically log me in to baseball reference. Is that a sneaky way they can throw ads on me until I – Log myself in. Like if I exit baseball reference right now and I open a new tab and I go baseballreference.com. No, I'm logged in. So I don't know, man. I don't know what happened. But I use the perks of, of paying for baseball reference all the time. I'd love to go to baseball reference and be like, hey, you want to sponsor the morning show? I, I shout you out every day. But I'm guessing their response would be like, uh, seems like you're going to shout us out anyway. To which we should counter, yeah, but if you give us a discount code, I'll give it to all the people that, you know, look. And then, then they would say, okay, let's test it out. You listening, baseball reference? I just played out the whole fucking negotiation like I was in my shower and talking myself through it. I was reading this Bukowski book, Buke, um, which is just a col- like a tons of collection of poems. I think I've told you guys that I don't like I don't like books like these where they they take they take all the poems and they they redistribute them. It's like what they do for dead dead poets is uh, they make greatest hits albums. They make playlists like Bukowski on beer, Bukowski on people, Bukowski on the racetracks. And it's like I just want, but it's also hard with poems and poetry books because a lot of it is like he wrote and submitted them to magazines and they weren't all in one place. So they're collecting them and putting them in one place. But I love the way my dude, Ted Kuzer's books are because, you know, I can just buy all 10 of his books and then I'll put them on my shelf. And then I, I have the full collection in the order he wrote it. Like I like, I like listening to music by album. I like reading because then you're in that dude's headspace. I'm a chronological person. It's a cron pod. You're in that dude's headspace. All right, but I got to get going. I think I'm running late. Um, I read this poem by Bukowski, and it starts off, it's about famous people dying, and it's called It's Strange. And there's another one by Bukowski called Bluebird that is really, really popular, but I want to do eventually. So maybe I'll just do back-to-back Buk days. Um, but I read this, and I thought it was interesting because he's talking about when famous people die. He says, it's strange when famous people die, whether they have fought the good fight or the bad one. Uh, Whether we like them or not, he says they are like old buildings, old streets, things and places that we are used to, which we accept because they simply are there. And then I and then Regis Philbin passed away. Like right after I read this or the next morning, it was kind of I was like, oh, that was weird. I just was in that like mindset. And uh, it is super weird. When famous people die, because you don't know them and then then you kind of like have this weird realization. where like, well, I like them, but I didn't know them. But am I actually going to miss them? And you kind of feel guilty about it. You're like, I, what is going on in my head right now? Uh, and he, he, he sums it up with uh, the trouble with the famous is that they must be replaced and they can never quite be replaced. And that gives us this unique sadness. Yeah. Robin Williams was easily the biggest like, oh, shit, like, I love him, and no one else is going to be like him again for me. That's a weird thing to wrap your head about. Because, you know, whenever that happens and you're sad, and I feel like you have friends or buddies like, dude, are you really, like, sad? You didn't know him. You just saw, like, a version of him that he projected to you. You didn't even know the real him. And it's like, you really got to think on it. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I think I am. I don't know. I don't get it. I saw the timing with Regis. Oh, I love Regis. I mean, Regis is a natural-born entertainer, which is what I describe Jake as a lot. There's a lot of poems in here I marked. Look at all them. Look at all that. But, uh, yeah, I want to do the Bluebird one again. That's really good. Someone in the YouTube chat said, Robin Williams passing hit different. Oh, Abe. Yeah, that was the first one where it was like, I was like, uh, I think I'm really sad. That was, that was like my mindset. Like, you know, it always happens. And you're like, fuck. For my dad, I think it was Thurman Munson. But for, yeah, I think I was like, I think this is like, 
I think I'm going to take like an hour and be sad about this. And then I was like, wait, why? But it, okay, accept it. It was very odd. Very odd. I read that and I thought it is weird. It is a weird phenomenon. Um, I got to get going. Tune into regular uh, John Boy Media YouTube because Jake will be going live with um, Wake and Jake. And then this is the first true test for Jake and I. We're both doing our morning shows. Then we're doing JJR at 10 o'clock. Then we're doing the talking baseball pregame show. Then we're doing a talk. Then we're recording a talking baseball full episode. Then we're recording the talking Yanks pregame show. Then we're recording a talking Yanks full episode. Sharp stats. Then I'm covering the game tonight. So it's the first incredibly busy day test to see can we do this for ten weeks or not. Uh, well, one week down, or was that a half week? I think it was a half week. I don't know how it goes. Anyway, see you guys later. Thanks for hanging out with me. Be back tomorrow in the morning with more baseball books, American history, and American towns. This is Blitz and Trapper. You guys are the best. See ya. It turned out to be the howling of a dog. Or what to be exact, the sound sent shivers down my back. But I was drawn into the pack, and before long, they allowed me to join in and sing their song So from the cliffs and higher still Where we would gladly get our fill Howling endlessly and shrilly at the dawn